<sighs> Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Starfucker LP, Miracle My On My On. Starfucker is a Portland synth pop outfit that I have been conscious of for quite a while. They were actually one of the first groups I ever remember blogging about on like a consistent basis back when they were coming out with releases like Jupiter around 2009. The first impressions were good. I mean, it just pretty much felt like synthesizer, lead indie pop with very light male vocals, kind of hitting a high pitch, a lot of infectious grooves, some disco influenced rhythms, like on the tracks Big Toy and Biggie Smalls, and actually a, a pretty good cover of Girls Just Want to Have Fun. The rest of the LP, however, didn't really stick with me, and at the time, I never really reviewed the album, so I wasn't really forced to think of why the album didn't appeal to me all the way, or or why it didn't, you know, really entertain me as much as I, I guess it should have. Starfucker's next full-length release, Reptilians, is another album that, you know, I kind of skipped in 2011. However, I guess my reasons for doing so kind of became a little bit more clear after hearing another full-length length LP from these guys, though I do like the electronic indie pop sound that they shoot for. The instrumentation that typically shows up in their tracks, it feels so flat and kind of just borderline colorless. These guys are incredibly just unimaginative when it comes to sound, honestly. The synthesizers sound like they're either coming from some kind of digital audio workstation preset or just like a, a relatively cheap synthesizer. But on top of that, the synthesizers, they feel so untreated. They feel just so bland, sort of run-of-the-mill. The bass tone, too, just feels very, very common. The drums kind of feel the same way, too. They are there, you can hear them, you can hear pretty much detail in the fills and stuff like that, but they are miles away from being sharp or resonant or beefy in the same way that you would hear on, like, any record that has come off of DFA Records. And the vocals that front all of these tracks feel kind of like they, they reach this high-pitched sort of MGMT kind of quality, but they're way less memorable and, and distinct. I honestly feel like the band hasn't really crafted a sound that is faintly distinct across their four full-length albums, and, and the reason for that being is that they don't really try. It's, it's not really a focus. It's not something that they even want to put effort into, it seems. Just take a look at the album Reptilians, after which the band dropped a demos version of the album. And it's it's kind of funny because when you listen to the demos version of the album, songs like White is Noon on the demos album, the demos version of Reptilians, sound just as flat and unfinished and just normal, regular, plain sounding as the version that actually made it onto the LP. Same with Hungry Ghost and, and, and Buried Us Alive. Sure, the sounds and the instrumentation do come off as being slightly different, but in terms of the heaviness of the sounds and the vibrance of the sounds, especially the vibrance of the sounds, the quality is the same. And unfortunately, Miracle Mile is, is pretty much the same in terms of sound quality. For years, the band has just rocked this sound that is not lo-fi enough to be gritty or, or weird, but it's not sharp or well-recorded enough to be professional sounding or impressive. As far as the opening track on this LP goes, While I'm Alive, the guitar has this really bad direct in tone as if it's being directly plugged into a soundboard or a computer. It just feels just bodiless. And the falsetto vocals, not only do they have just no personality to them, but they sound like a Bee Gees inspired nightmare. The song Sazed, the opening of this track, has this kind of quaint, crappy sounding like little baby keyboard throbbing away right at the start of the song, which is kind of funny because most groups would throw that in and then sort of rush in a bunch of great sounding instrumentation to sort of contrast this very cheap synthesized sound coming out of the baby keyboard. However, the transition doesn't work because all the instrumentation that rushes in sounds like it comes out of a cheap keyboard too. The vocals are typically mixed so badly you can't even really tell what they're saying when it sort of feels like they're so upfront that you should be able to make them out. And it's not like the vocals are singing anything that's just mind-blowingly emotive or genuine or anything like that. They're just singing these basic forgettable indie 101 melodies that the band seems to have crafted up over these very plain drum beats and grooves that we all have heard rocked way harder by contemporaries like Hot Chip, LCD Sound System, Cut Copy, as well as M83. When it comes to the beats on this thing, they just do not hit 
hard. The most I could see this album inspiring is like uh, some foot tapping. And there are some softer moments on this LP, some acoustic spots, but they're just as lacking in detail as the dancier tracks and, and lacking in good sounds too. Like the track, the auto harp that flies in on that track, it's muddy as hell. At least the vocals are a little more audible than they typically are, but the melody is, is just kind of, you know, cheap sounding. I think the only track I came away from this LP actually thinking sounded halfway good was the song Leave It All Behind, which has these blaring electro keys pulsating away all over the song. But honestly, that's it. I mean, I just do not know where this band is coming from. I mean, obviously they must be passionate about what they do. They come out with one album after another. Maybe they're more passionate about performing or, or writing songs or something like that because it really seems like the sound of, of what they do is horrifyingly neglected and, and continues to be with album to album with just no progression or evolution in how the band comes across sonically or how their instruments sound. Maybe there's a little bit more effects on albums like Reptilians as well as this new one, Miracle Mile, but it all just kind of feels like a demo when the band, I, I imagine, isn't trying to make demos. It really is difficult for me to focus on much of anything else that the band has going on this LP as well as their last LP because the sounds are just so deafeningly bland. Really, I'm feeling a light to decent three on this thing. If you've given it a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And, and that's it. Starfucker, Miracle Mile, forever.